really nice if your uh, dog wasn't jumping up on your friends and family, if they weren't jumping up on the or couch, you. or you, if they uh, you know, weren't jumping up on the counters. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk uh, about how you can stop your dog from jumping up. We're going to talk about some of the, uh, the really important ways to set them up so that they can make a choice and how you can give them great information. Uh, today's uh, show... We always, it's a scramble to get this done. I just, I just <laughs> ate a bunch of pizza. I hope I don't have pizza on my face or in my teeth. Uh, I may. I mean, that may be something we see in the replay, but I hope not. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for joining us here in the train station in today's show. We're going to talk to you about how to stop your dog from jumping up. I'm Ken Steep. I'm Kel McCann. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. <laughs> so, uh... This has been an exciting get ready moment, like trying to get everything ready to get the yes, show going. We, it uh, it's a bit of a scrambly day, but we love to hang out with you guys. Now, we do the train station for you. We do our live shows just for you guys. So if you have a question about uh, teaching your dog to not jump up, uh, you know, allowing them to make better choices, showing them how to make better choices, then make sure you drop that uh, in the chat. Or if you're watching this on the replay, you can drop it in the comments. This below. jumping can be um, related to them jumping on people, but it also could yeah. be jumping on furniture if you don't want that, or putting their paws up on the counter or the table or or um, or things like that. The, um, the training for these sort of works for all of those situations. Totally, yeah. And th some of the techniques that we're going to talk about, by the end of today's show, you're going to have a deeper understanding of how to stop your dog from jumping up mm -hmm. um, and it's I think you're gonna find it really helpful regardless of what kind of jumping up you're dealing with I think you're gonna uh, you're gonna really enjoy this stream now if this is your first time here on the train station this is the only YouTube live show where you will see people toot on purpose <laughs> <clears throat> this is the train station my name's Ken Steep this is Kale McCann we're professional dog trainers at McCann Dogs where every week at McCann Dogs we can help more than 500 dog owners to overcome the same dog training challenges that you have. So uh, we love to do these shows for you know our audience that can't quite make it out to the McCann Dogs training facility. So drop your questions if you have any in the chat. The uh, <laughs> I let's see what we can do here. I see a lot of familiar faces in there. Fam familiar faces. Well, familiar names. Familiar I guess names. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now you guys know that one of my favorite things uh, about the train station is doing the roll call, knowing where you guys are joining us from. And I see some people that are way ahead of us already. But oops, let me know where you guys are checking in from with the roll call. Where are you joining us here from uh, in the train station today? I'd love to know. So, Kale, let's talk a little bit about jumping up. This week, actually, in our classes, we're talking a little bit about jumping up. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that. You yeah. Know, it's a challenge that I think a lot of people have. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, dogs jump up for a number of reasons, but I would think that the main reason is that when dogs jump up is because they're overexcited or overstimulated or maybe trying to be a little bit pushy or in charge of the situation. There's many reasons why dogs jump up and it's a really, really common thing. So if your dog's doing it, don't feel like you have like some, you know, terrible problem you know, when we ask our students, our classes, you know, who's having trouble with jumping up? Almost 100% of the room puts their hand up yeah, to say, me, me, me. It's pretty darn So common. it's really, really common. Um, and the good news is, is even though it's a, a common thing, it is something that's absolutely preventable and uh, trained, uh, trainable as well. Um, and there's a, a number of different ways that we can do that. But I think, <clears throat> excuse me, the biggest thing to remember is that you know, all of the McCann Method um, dog training that we focus on is setting the dog up to be successful first when they're first learning something right. so that they're rehearsing doing things correctly rather than letting the dog develop a bad habit for a really long time and then having to come in and do a lot of fixing. That's certainly possible. So if you've had a dog that's been rehearsing, jumping up for quite some time, don't worry about it. We'll, you know, go back and start from scratch. But the ideal situation is to um, give them good information early early on so that it's not really a problem that you end up having to deal with for very long. Absolutely. So let's see where you guys are joining us from. I see lots of people. I see Danielle from joining us from Brazil, a uh, kinder teacher from Jacksonville, North Carolina, da uh, Daylene from Taylorsville, North Carolina. Um, I've seen there, somebody from Iowa. The chat is moving so quickly now. I've got to try to keep up Holy. here. Holy. 
Florida. I know, Ohio, Guelph, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hello from Ottawa. Hi, Hello, Shandy, Shandy Blake. Uh, Nicole from New Jersey. Uh, Marty says Michiganders, yay. And Marty McCann <laughs> is the founder of the McCann Method. That's Hi, Dad. dad. <laughs> um, Grizel from Sarasota, Florida. I see uh, Moir Han. I hope I'm saying that right. From Bergen, Norway. Thanks for joining us uh, here from Norway. I'm not sure what time <clears throat> it would be there. Um, I probably, our UK friends, so often we get people from the UK. And I think they're about five hours ahead. I mm -hmm. wonder how much. Maybe I'm not sure what, what time it would be, but thanks, because it's got to be late wherever you are. It must be the middle of the morning, I'd imagine. Um, Brianna from Penticton, Kivo from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Delita from Easton, PA. I want to thank everybody for joining us here at the train station. You know, the one thing I wanted to mention, we had a bunch of people buy uh, the shirts, buy the uh, our merch shirts, which I think are pretty cool. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to just show you guys. So we do have some merch available for you guys. If you click the link in the description below, you can buy our team tee, the McCann Dogs team tee. And I think our training mug is still available, but you'll see that uh, in the description below. Uh, if you're on YouTube now, that's one thing we should mention. Morning training mug. That's yes, actually, training I love that, that, that you thought of that. That's yes. very smart because so, we often train during drinking tea. Yeah, that's true. Or it's we, a good we time talk about a lot do. of dog training. We do. We talk about dog tea. training and we do dog training. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can grab that merch in the link in the description below. Now let's jump into it. And I use that term uh, intentionally, I guess, ironically, to talk <laughs> about jumping. Um, we use a different word. A lot of people might use a certain phrase to tell their mm -hmm. dog to not get up on something. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, we hear a lot of people say, get down, get down, <laughs> when, when they want their dog to... To dance? To, yeah, to boogie, uh, to get off something. And um, the way we, we think about jumping up and we want you to think of jumping up is that we want a command that says, don't jump in the first place. You know, if you're saying get down or down, it usually what's happening is you're saying it after the dog's already gotten up on something and that's probably going to be the thing that we're going to focus on the most uh, today is timing because timing is everything in dog training yeah. if your timing is off in your delivery information or how clear you're being with your cues or your handling or whatever it might be there can be a major disconnect for your dog and all they dog want all the dog wants from us is to be as black and white with our information as possible so it's easy for them to understand and um using get down number one it sort of insinuates that you're using the command after the behavior has already been portrayed. Uh, and number two is we use the command down in um, other scenarios. So if I yeah. was to say down to my dog, I would expect her to lie right down on the floor. So just for clarity, we want to try not to use a, the same command for two totally different behaviors. Yeah, I see Daylene B says, uh, I say no jump. Now, that may work. I, I would be, um, I, I would want, if for me, would want something a little bit more abrupt, a little bit shorter, Daylene. You may find that uh, using uh, two words is a little bit slow. You might miss that moment mm -hmm. where you catch your dog in the act. I also would run into trouble with that because if there's any people in here that have taught their dog to jump on command, um, it would be pretty confusing to say no jump because the dog's been trained to jump yeah, on that's command. True. Yep. Um, so that that could um, be a bit of a gray area for, for some dogs that may know that behavior. For sure. So did you say what we the term we use? I said off, yeah, yes. Yeah, so I see Mary Lang and Brianna both use the term off as yep. well. And that, that's I think that's a pretty good command. It's a good starting point for what we're going to talk about today. Oh, lots of people say off. Yeah, which is great. It's cool. really great to hear, for sure. So let's talk a little bit about... Um, some of the ways that you can help your puppy to train through or your young dog or whatever dog at uh, any age. I mean, Deegan was a, a jumper uh, <clears throat> at two and I had to work through some of that. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about how you can set yourself up, to, your dog up to be trained, to, to train through it even. Yeah. So if you have a dog that or a puppy that loves to jump up, set them up to be successful by using a house line, a leash or a house line, even in the house. And I know... There's so many people that are that say they think that's a very crazy yeah, they're idea. Like, wow, a leash in the I house. I thought leashes were just for walking your dogs. <laughs> we need to be great communicators for our dog. We need to be good leaders and give them consistent, and fair information. Mm -hmm. A house line is a great way to do that. So, if you have a puppy or a young dog that's jumping up on the counters or jumping up on people, make sure anytime that they're out of their crate that you're using a house line with them. And the main reason why we use a house line, uh, there's two main reasons. Number one is that if um, you want to get your dog to listen to you, follow. Following through with the command that you give them 
is imperative for the dog understanding that they need to listen to you. What happens when you don't have a leash on your dog and you give a command and the dog either A, doesn't know it, or B, doesn't care to listen to you in that moment, what's probably going to end up happening is you're going to say off and they're just going to ignore you. Right. And then if you say off again and they still ignore you, and then they say off again and they still ignore you, and then you say it louder, or maybe you say it with more anger in your voice. Now you're training your dog. Now you have a bunch of uh, opportunities to ignore me. And in order for you to listen to me, I'm going to have to yell and scream at you. And we don't really want to have to do that. The second thing that's really important about having a line on is that other than follow through is that if I need to redirect my dog, I don't really want to be doing that by physically grabbing the dog's body Um, for a number of reasons. I could end up scaring the dog. I could cause my dog to turn into like a big play game and could nip and bite me if they're being really unruly. I don't want to be grabbing at the actual dog. So by having a leash on the dog, I can grab the leash and then I can redirect the dog. I can keep myself under control looking like i'm in charge safe as well if you have a dog that's being bratty and nippy and biting there's all kinds of reasons that um that we suggest you use a leash versus other other methods i see lots of people jumping on the stream here so if you've just arrived uh welcome to the train station i'm ken and this is kale make sure that you drop your questions in the chat we'll be um if this is your first time at the train station we'll do we'll talk a little bit about training then we'll do some demos and show you how to apply those skills and then we'll come back and answer your questions so this is a great time for you to drop those questions in the chat. Uh, I just pointed to his comment there. Tim, yeah. So Tim actually um, has been a long time train station mm-hmm. back passenger. Welcome back, Tim. Hi, Tim. Yeah. And uh, Tim says, my Malinois wants to jump as soon as he comes out of his crate. Yeah. And I, I just pointed to that one because we actually did um, a tra- our talk train station. Oh my gosh. If I could speak in normal sentences, maybe you could understand me. It's live. <laughs> um, we talked last week in our live station. Um, episode uh, about the word wait and I actually did a demonstration on having the dog wait uh, before they came out of the crate in order to to get that behavior to stop so maybe we can actually do a quick re-demo yeah, yep, of that today yep, great so idea. we'll we'll show you a little yeah demo and you know what I see thing. a couple people that are talking about house lines that um, their dogs chew on the line and that's yeah. something we can definitely talk about mm-hmm. um, where did I see it? yeah so Mary as Mary wearing Williams says what if a dog wants to eat or chew on the leash inside it's okay outside so we will talk mm-hmm. about yeah. that I see that uh, dr Charles Lee also has that problem. So yeah. we'll definitely go over. We'll go some into of that. that more detail, but so, essentially it's the same thing as if they chew your shoes or your couch. It's, you know, you treat it as, it, as if it's an object, not a toy. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So uh, before we get into the actual demo, I want you guys to uh, let me know what do you think are some early indications, some early warning signs that your dog is about to jump? Because un- understanding that timing and understanding some of the. She's Hello, looking at you. Oh, she's staring directly at me. <laughs> Understanding some of these behaviors and really knowing before your dog jumps is going to be really helpful for your timing. So I want to see it in the chat below. Let me know what are some indications that your dog might jump because we talked about using that off command. And as you start working with your dog and you you have a little deeper understanding of how to work through some of this, one of the best things you can do is give them early information. So understanding when they're thinking about jumping (coughs) or when they're about to jump and using your off at that point. Now, we're going to show you in just a few minutes how to use your off and, you know, how to uh, uh, stop the dog if they're just so wildly tempted to jump, jump up. You can work through that, but using that off early is going to be really, really helpful. So what are some things that you uh, see a dog do before they jump up? Uh, Well, one of the main things is the dog, especially if this is the dog jumping on something else like a person or whatnot, is usually they will look and stare intently at whatever they're about to jump on. And then the main thing is that the dog will usually get um, excited and then they'll coil they'll sort of dip down a little bit before yeah. they spring up and if you're not taking action by the time that they're in that coil position then you're probably going to either get jumped on or your dog's going to jump on something else so you really want to look for the pre cues that your dogs will give um, before they jump and they you know they always do something dogs just don't jump out of the blue there's always some type of precursor yeah. or moment that indicates to you my dog's about to jump and then you can take action absolutely there's a comment in there that i want to make sure you don't miss which one is it um down 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 um where is it here do you have a this okay yeah 
Okay, so from Moirhan, uh, do you have a line attached to a collar or a harness? Yeah, I'm glad you grabbed this one. I'm worried about the neck, so what is the safest way? I think the idea is great, but I want it to be 100% safe for the puppy. So this is a really important co- thing mm-hmm. to talk about for sure. So do you want to do you want to start this one off? Uh, sure. So we recommend that you attach it to the collar. The um, we're not big um, believers in the harness being used as a training tool. Um, you know, our dogs may wear a harness later on in life as like a cool like th- it looks cool <laughs> yeah but it's not really once they learn yeah, to walk on a loose leash it's not really doing a whole lot and the reason why we don't really use training it, it for training is that when the leash attaches to the dog's back you have the least amount of control yeah. and when the leash is attached to the dog's neck you have a lot more control of the head even better yet something like a gen leader you have attached right to the the chin so you can turn the head so that can give you a lot more information the only time we would sort of break that rule is if we were dealing with a dog that was like like under 10 pounds or had any tricky issues or yeah. things like that where we needed to be careful. But we're not honking on the dog's leash so no. hard that we're going to be hurting them. Um, so you want to have that leash attached to the collar so that you can um, – so that you can redirect your dog with the easiest ability. And technique goes a long way as well. Yeah, We're not just sure. yanking on the leash. There's a specific way that we hold a leash. There's a way that we that we move the leash. All these certain things are going to affect change in the dog without hurting them, but it's um, gonna take control of them. Yeah, it's much safer. So imagine uh, that your uh, leash is connected to the center back of that harness. If you're gonna give your dog information and guide them down, you're pulling them directly back, which is really, not safe. Yeah, we've so, seen some dogs like flip right back. Yeah, on the back so be and careful about that. Let's, you good. know what? Let's just jump in. Let's jump into the train. Well, station. I didn't want to demo Maybe. that. No, no. <laughs> and talk, we, we can start showing how we how we deal with jumping yes, up on the counter. Yes, we can do that. You know, I what? don't want to demo you demo with a no, of harness not. on though. Of course not. No, but let's uh, let's head over to the train yeah, station okay. and talk about how we can set our dogs up to make a choice. It also gives me an opportunity to toot as we head on over to the train station. <laughs> Okay, you should be good over there. Well, I see the B is out. You guys will see the great big B that Beeline was playing with moments ago. Yeah, she loves this thing. So do you want me, I'll, maybe I can set up a fake countertop. Okay. Um, okay, so when you're doing your, um, pardon? I'll go get some uh, it's a distraction. Oh, okay. Um, when you're um, working on uh, any type of exercises like this, it's really important that you have a collar and a leash on. So I'm just going to put her collar and leash on so I have a really good control. Now, one of the first things that you need to be able to do is understand how to hold the leash. So when we're training, um, we usually take the leap of a uh, loop of our leash and we put it over the thumb of our right hand. A lot of the training that we do, our dogs start hanging out at our left hand side or they're in front of us. So having the leash at the left is helpful. And so that way, or having the leash in your right hand can be helpful. That way you can feed with your left hand because it's closest to the dog um, and I can reinforce her. Now, what I need to make sure she understands before I, I get into my you know training off is I need to make sure she understands to hold a sit because I'm gonna utilize the sit a lot in my training. Um, when you have an unwanted behavior, one of the most helpful things to do in your training is to take a behavior that you don't like and replace it with something that you do like. So for example, she's very interested in this thing. Um, Can I just use you first because it makes, it's a bit more easy to understand with a human. So if I wanted to teach um, Beeline not to jump up on somebody, I might get her into a sitting position and I might reward. And I'm not sure if you can see, I'm just gonna turn her leash this way so you can see a bit better. Well, why don't we we just talk about the counter first and then we can talk about people separately. Or do you want to do people first? I don't want to do the correction, I want to do the reward first. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> I'm calling that shots. Works. I'm calling the shots here, people. I understand. <laughs> okay. So when she's sitting, it's very important that I keep my leash loose because when I'm doing this, if I'm doing this and I'm holding her tight, she's not really learning to make any decisions for herself. She's got to keep the leash loose so that she's sitting on her own. Once she can hold a sit, then I can have Ken come and stand near her for a moment. Off. Good girl. Good off. And I would start to introduce her to the word off and I would reward her for keeping her paws on the floor. Again, I could do this in a standing position, so I could just say off and do this, but for some dogs, 
that's just a little bit too much freedom to make a poor choice. So if you get them in a specific control position, like a sit, I think you'll find that you have a little bit more success. Good girl. And something that's really important to remember is to not rush this part, because jumping up on people is naturally rewarding. How many times have you been somewhere and someone said, oh, you have a puppy, or oh, you, I just love dogs, and they get down and they make it really exciting. So they you make your job really difficult. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it much more difficult. So really, no. dogs are gonna do what's rewarding. So at this point, especially if you have a little wiggle bum dog that loves people, you need to make sitting this point more rewarding. And in a sit, you have so much control. It's really, really helpful to set them up to be successful. Yeah, no, not necessarily with this dog, with another dog I used to have. This was one of the hardest things for me to train. She could learn to recall really well walking, but being able to not jump on people because she was so friendly was really, really difficult. And for a long time, as close as Ken was there to Beeline, that was about as close as people could get. And I didn't actually let people come in and pet her until she was actually sitting. And then, of course, the next progression would be having people come in and pet them, and then you would reward your dog at the same time uh, to prevent the dog from getting up. Now, if... Well, let's show that. Then. We're gonna, let's, we'll show that. So we'll just work through those progressions to these guys. Okay, so as Ken approaches, I'm going to tell her off. Off, good girl, good off. Good. Off, yes, very good, good off. Good, so she's more focused on me than she is. Ken, can you compare her now? Off, good girl, off. Yes, good girl, good oh, off. What a good girl. Good, yes. Now, the other thing that's really important is when I reward her. So one of the most difficult things for dogs is when people approach. So as Ken approaches, I'm going to be rewarding, 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 good. And as Ken pets her, I'm going to reward, reward. But then as Ken leaves, I'm going to stop rewarding. Because I want her to understand that A, the best thing is when people come in to pet you. I'm trying to build her confidence, teach her to love people. And I also need to teach her that in the hardest moment when that person's petting her, that's when she needs to do her job. If I'm feeding as people are walking away, she's going to say, hey, these people need to walk away faster because I'm going to get a cookie when that happens. So the timing of the reward is extremely important. The only other thing that's weird about this is that when you're doing it, when you're in your training mode, you might not need to be a little bit snobby, so to speak, with that person. Because if you're so focused on that person and you're not watching your dog, you may miss the signs that they're giving you that they're about to jump. The wiggling, the looking and staring, the coiling. So as my, my person's coming in to pet the dog, I'm going to be sort of watching that person but my focus is mainly 90% of my focus is going to be on the dog good girl and another thing that's so important and you mentioned it uh, briefly is take a look Sit. at that leash now B yes. if B were really friendly we've worked on this and we've actually done some train stations on this exercise and girl. if you have a dog who loves people you pro you're probably a little bit tempted to hold them in position to think that as long as I keep them there yeah I can keep rewarding them and they don't get to jump on the people but that is a uh, it's a really dangerous thing for you because you'll start to think, okay, my dog gets it, but as soon as you don't have a leash on or as soon as you don't hold them in position, they've never had a chance to choose. You need to give your dog, using the McCann method, we insist you give your dog a chance to choose mm -hmm. so they can make a choice and you can reward them if they make a great choice and you can help them to be right or fix them if they make a bad choice. You just reminded me of something else. Another reason that's really important to keep your leash loose is you can actually cause unnecessary stress from your dog. Sure, yeah. So if Ken was to walk in and I did this off and I pulled up on her Absolutely. collar, poor Beeline is thinking, oh my goodness, when people approach, mom gets really stressed and she tightens my leash. Maybe I should be worried about something because my mom certainly seems worried about something. So I want to be very careful that I'm not pulling her back and yeah. pulling her tight. That's not very good information for my dog. I want to keep the leash loose and I need to be okay with her making a poor choice because if she does make a poor choice we'll show you how to how to fix that but I'm going to try and weigh on the side of opportunity by letting her choose does she sit or does she get up and I have a way to give her information uh, you know with whatever decision she happens to make for sure do you want to show maybe if she makes a mistake yeah what you might do yeah so for those of you who are just starting to allow your dog to make some choices it's likely they're going to make some mistakes if they've made some mistakes in the past. So start slowly. Lots of reward. Bring that distraction in just a little bit. Reward them. And then maybe break it off for the day and go back at it the next day. However, there's going to be a point where your dog's probably going to make a mistake. And here's how you work through that. So um, 
One of the things that we'll do first is, again, if I'm working a controlled sit, my expectation of this exercise is that she remains in a sit until I release her. Now, if she breaks the sit position, if she gets up out of position, and that's whether she jumps on Ken or even if she just stands up to run over to him, that's considered breaking the sit position. She's really not allowed to do anything but sit on a loose leash. So if that happens, I'm going to within one second, okay, babe, shorten up on my leash. My right hand's gonna go very close to her collar so I have good control of her head. And my left hand's gonna act like a bit of a rudder and I'm just gonna sort of scooch her bum in right beside me. Here, B, sit and I'm gonna lift up on the leash and I'm gonna tuck her bum into that sitting position. Now the reason why we do that versus ask the dog to sit again is because I need her to know that she's made an error. I need her, need her to know that she's made a mistake by leaving without permission. If she was to get up out of position on her own and I got a piece of food out and I brought her back and I gave her a treat for sitting back and then two seconds later she got up, I got a piece of food out, I lured her back and I fed her and then she got up and I got a piece of food out and I lured her back and fed her. Hopefully you see what's happening here. My smart little dog's gonna say, uh -huh. oh, I bet if I get up, my, uh -huh. my um, person's gonna grab some treats and put me back. But if she gets up and instead of getting treats, she gets a little replacement here and I place her back, she's gonna, huh, maybe I wasn't supposed to do that. But then I can complement that by putting her back, her leash is loose, she's holding position, yes! This is where you get the reward, girly. You get the reward in the sit. This needs to be the only place that she gets treats because I need to make this the absolutely most special um, spot. Do you get, can you guys see how cute she looks right She's now? The She's the cutest dog ever. Her eyes are like bulging. She's having so much fun. She says, I like being the dumb dog, mommy. I know. Good girl. Um, do you want to wait and show the off yeah. correction in a different thing? Um, we can show it now. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll maybe do people and then after we'll do countertops or something like that okay. and break it down. She, so, yeah, she, I don't think she's going to jump on you unless you ask her to. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can talk talk through it then. Okay. No, no, I, like, I, you just ask her to okay. jump on you. Yeah. Then. Okay, so if my dog was to... Hey, Lady Lou, what do you think you're doing? If my dog was to jump up on someone, and, so, and if my dog was able to jump up on someone, that tells me that my information and timing was late. Because, again, my goal is that I'm predicting this, and I'm preventing her from jumping by either asking her to sit or placing her into a sit so that she doesn't have that opportunity. But we're human, we're not perfect. You're gonna miss things all of the time. Your dog's gonna be super fast. So um, Beeline actually has a jump up command. So Ken's just gonna encourage her to jump up so that she will do this wrong so I can show you. Okay, okay. jump up for a sec. Hi, good sweetie, girl. I'm just oh, gonna let her jump girl. up just for a second so Hi, she girly. realizes it's okay oh, to do really that. Girl. Now, if I want her to uh, get off of him, I am going to use a little leash um, correction towards the floor. It's nothing big, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell her off. And when I pu uh, pull on the leash, I'm going to pull down towards the floor. And it's really, really important that you that you remember that. Because what I don't want to do is pull back on the leash and flip my, whole, my poor dog back. I'm not trying to hurt her at all. I just want to redirect her and teach her that jumping up really isn't very pleasant. Okay, go see. So I would say off. Good girl. Good. Yes. Okay, go see. Off. Good. Try again. Off. Good girl. Try again. Yes! yes. Good, Good girl. girl. Who's the smartest dog in the whole world? Yes. yes. Okay, try again. Go see. Yay! Yes. Good, girl. Good girl. Oh my goodness. Good girl. Okay, go see. Yes! Good girl! Excellent! Good! <laughs> She's, She's like, excited. okay, I think I get it. Yeah. Good girl, Miss okay, B. I'm, I'm going to go check on the comments yeah, and just, questions. I'm just going to talk about what happened there. Yep, that was yep. really, really good. So, here, sit. Good girl. What B did there is she jumped a few times, and we sort of set her up to, to fail, which maybe you don't need to do with your dogs. Hopefully your dogs will just jump because they don't know any better. But you'll notice my timing. I set off, and then I pulled towards the floor to get her four feet on the floor. When her four feet were on the floor, I immediately praised her to make sure that that was a pleasant place for her to be. We let her try again. She made a few mistakes. Each time she jumped, I set off, and then I used the leash to redirect her. Again, I'm pulling towards the floor. Oh, good girl, um, in order to get her off. When I was able to sort of coax her towards Ken and she chose not to jump, hopefully you saw the um, um, 
response I had to her. I praised her. I fed two and three and four treats as she was in front. I need to make it a huge deal that sitting in front and being on the floor is a much more fun place to be than jumping up. So I need to make sure I'm, I'm complimenting um, that um, behavior. Okay, B, that was a good demo dog, babe. Okay, okay. Kale McCann, dropping knowledge here at the train station. <laughs> Let us know your questions, your comments. I see tons of great comments coming here in here in the chat. I just want to uh, see what you guys have to say. I know there's, a, you know, what's um, a common question tonight is people asking about treats. What kind of oh, treats? How much yeah. do you feed? What are you feeding? And this is a good sure. question because we actually uh, we made sort of an accommodation. We like this topic. Yeah, we made a bit of an accommodation tonight. We um, we did make an accommodation tonight, and we actually just made a YouTube video about this like three weeks ago, we did. didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. On different types of treats to use. Yeah. Um, t right now, tonight, I am actually using Bee's dinner, and I'm using that because, well, a couple reasons. Number one, she has a bit of a sensitive stomach right now, and I don't want to give her any rich treats, so I'm just using um, just kibble. Um, and it has some powdered probiotic stuff on it since her belly is a bit upset. Um, and I'm cho choosing in this moment to use a lower value reward because there's no distractions here. There's nothing really going on. And that way she's not getting a lot of extra treats and putting on a lot of extra weight. However, if we were in a different location with more distractions, I would not show up with kibble as my treat. Right. I would bring the big guns out. I would bring much more valuable, um, high value treats. For my dog, she prefers things like um, if I cut up block cheese, um, she really likes hot dog wieners, she likes leftover chicken breast, she's a high roller. She likes really high value treats. Um, I try to stick away stick away from the commercial treats with her because her belly's very, very sensitive. However, my other dogs, they love things like rollover or zooks or um, all kind, anything that you want really, but it needs to be um, high value. Um, one of the things that we recommend when you're using treats too is to make sure that you use treats that are um, semi-moist so that the dog isn't chewing away. So you want to stay away from things like milk bones or hard food that your dog has to chew. You want them just to eat and, and keep going. Um, and I would probably say that our dogs, one of our dog's favorite treats are those tuna treats. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. yeah, it's a really... I think Dan may have dropped a link to them in the chat. Oh, there we go. Homemade treats by McCann Dogs. He just dropped a link there. Um, I would say that that's out of all like our instructors and our students, that's like their favorite treat. It's very healthy. Um, it's just tuna and egg and flour and the dogs go crazy oh, over it. Yeah, you can make like hundreds of treats for like a couple dollars. I hate them. They stink, but the dogs they absolutely go crazy for yes. them. Yes. Yeah. They last a long time. Josie Dolan says, how do I teach my puppy not to jump on the couch? We are going to get to that Josie yeah. for sure in just a couple of minutes. Um, Lots of great questions coming in, and I want to move back just a little bit. Um, let's see. Okay, so Melinda has a, a question. She says, my dog can greet uh, now greet nicely without jumping, but when they finish petting and turn to walk away, she will jump. Jumping <laughs> has been such a problem, and progress is slow. Yeah, that's not uncommon. Yeah. What I would suggest that you do is um, get your rewards ready. And so in the demonstration, I suggested that you not reward when somebody walks away. But for you and your dog, I would actually bring Break that rule and I would actually ask you specifically to reward as somebody approaches while somebody's petting and also while somebody leaves we need to get the attention from your dog onto you and not on that person that's walking away yeah. as the person walks away I might say look at me and redirect the dog's eyes up to your face I might call your dog's name I might give them a little touch I would do something to get the dog engaged with me as that person walks away so that my dog learns when that person walks focus on me and I'm gonna give you a reward so I would just play around with the timing of your reward and be proactive in that moment. Um, Delita um, asked, she'd love to call us. We actually have an opportunity for you to reach out in mm. the um, description below. We have You can call us on our Anchor channel, send us a voice message, then we can play it on the air. I don't know if we're going to have time for an Anchor call tonight, but um, if you guys and anybody that might be watching the train station, whether you're watching it live here, getting all the, the uh, toot action, or if you're watching it in the replay, you can definitely click that link and just send us a voice message. So that's a good opportunity for you to let us know what your question is. Um, Shauna Larsh says, my six-month-old golden learns so quick and stays off with that command, but my seven-year-old rescue is such a struggle. How to teach her? Should I be doing something different than how I train the puppy? Really, really great question. Now, the one challenge you may have is that your uh, rescue or this older dog may have come into your household with a few more opportunities to make some mistakes, so you might have to pro progress more slowly. You're, that uh, older dog, we talked about dogs will do what's rewarding. 
Well, if your dog has a chance to be right, be wrong, get up on the counter and get something delicious, whether it's in your household or, or their previous one, it's going to make your life a little bit more difficult. But you're going to go back to basics with that older dog. You're going to you're going to follow the exact same steps. You just might take a little bit longer before you progress, before you make things more challenging for them. I'd you need to remember too that you know with jumping, and this is a, a comment for everybody. Jumping is a hard thing to fix, just like barking or chewing or things like that, because those are sort of under the category of what we call self-rewarding behaviors. So those are behaviors that your dogs will do that they need zero reinforcement for you, uh, from you to do, because it's just fun to do it, especially if they're getting up on the couch and they get to steal food or up on the counter, sorry, and they get to steal food or, you know, they jump up on someone and that's a bit of a playful game for them. So it's really, really hard to fix. So along with what we're, we're showing you to do as far as the training methods go, you also need to complement that by making sure that your dog is not rehearsing successfully jumping on people or things yep. outside of your attention because dogs learn very quickly, okay, I don't jump when the bait bag's on and the leash is on and you're like in training mode, but when you're not paying attention to me, I don't ever get in trouble for jumping. I can get away with it and it's really fun. I'm allowed to do it in this moment. So um, prevention is really key. And really think of it this way. You know, if you just trained for five or 10 minutes on, you know, an off command. And then, you know, you take your leash off and you go into the other room and you're not paying attention to your dog and someone comes to the door and your dog jumps all over them. You've literally erased the entire 10 minute session that you just had and probably the three before that because they've just, you know, all of their their rules have just gone out the window. Yeah. So prevention is key. That's why we want you to keep a leash on the dog. That's why we want you to use a crate when you're not um, when you're not able to supervise your dog all of the time. It's impossible to watch your dog every single moment of the day. We're busy human beings. We sure. got lots to do, um, and so you know, putting them in a, away in a crate where they can have you know have a bed and a bone and just chill out so that they're not rehearsing bad behaviors. So that when you bring them out, you um, you are ready to deal with what you're ready comes to give them good information. Yeah. We always talk uh, using the chemist sort of, about being clear, consistent, and fair with your dog. And to do that, sometimes you need to set them up so that uh, you know you're in training mode. You're you're ready to work with them. Um, using a crate can be so helpful for that because they don't get to rehearse the bad stuff. So mm -hmm. that's uh, one of the big important things uh, when it comes down to giving your dog good information consistently. Uh, I like Siobhan's uh, question. So speaking of treats for training, can you recommend alternatives for food? I've only used kibble as treats, but my puppy goes nuts trying to find the food and has a hard time listening and gets frustrated. Well, a big part that you want to work all, use alongside the food is your voice, giving your dog lots of reinforcement for remaining in position. Now, maybe kibble, your puppy absolutely goes crazy for it. Maybe there's a lower value food for your puppy, something that you can mark that moment and use that food when they are down and in the right position. But you're going to have your voice with you all the time. All of our exercises, and again, we posted a video a couple of weeks ago maybe, about how we're going to use food. It's a high value resource that your dog, you know that your dog really likes, but you're going to be working away from it. So good timing, using your voice, which you'll always have on you, are great ways to bridge the gap as you build some confidence, build some independence, and get your dog in a, in a position where they are making great choices. Um, the other thing that just sort of your question reminded me of is it's also really good to teach your dog um, commands like leave it or attention yeah. commands so that, you know, say there's food on the floor. If you were to tell them leave it or to ask them for attention, they would learn to be able to look away from the food. We do a lot of work with our dogs using food as a reward, but we also do equal amount of work with food as a distraction so that if our dog, you know, sees food over there, they learn that they just can't go grab it whenever they want to. They need either permission from us or they can learn to be called their name away from that, that food distraction. Um, so I, it sounds like your dog could use a little bit more work with food as a distraction as well yeah, yep. not just a reward so that you can control it a little bit more knowledge bombs right here <laughs> knowledge in bombs. the train station so christina Boom. ramsey mentions my puppy tends to jump mostly on our youngest child and kids yeah. can be exciting this is a pretty common uh question or, or you know a, a challenge that a lot of parents have yeah i think that a lot of the time the the children in the house uh sort of get viewed a bit more like a litter mate to the puppies and so the the puppies and dogs sort of treat them a little bit differently also kids are little and they squeak and they squawk and their hands move and they run fast and they yeah. look fun and they're yeah. you know they often don't really know how to redirect a dog if they're jumped on and right. so you know it's very very important that if you have a dog and you have children or you have a dog and your dog is around children that you have very good control of your dog by using a leash 
so that they can't rehearse it. You can even teach your children to use the command off, but then what you'll do as the adult is you'll do the training to back up their command off. So they might say off and you might use the food to direct your dog into a sit or you might use the leash to direct your dog with that sit placement that I showed earlier. We do not expect or want the children to physically be doing that with the puppies yeah. for a couple of reasons. Um, if they do it incorrectly or they have poor timing, the dog's not going to really learn what they're supposed to do. And sometimes it actually actually can work against you because if the, the child's learning it and they're not really doing a very good job because they're a child and it's hard for them, yeah. um, then sometimes the dogs sort of go, oh, I thought that you were really not very good at making me listen and now I know you're not very good right. and it actually can make it worse before it's better. So we really want the, the humans to be in there and that goes same for friends. You know, if people come to our house. This is a really important point. If people come to our house and my dog's being ill-behaved, I do not expect nor do I want anybody other than the two of us to be... Um, redirecting my dog in any way because you know I know how to do it properly with good timing with good leash management I know how I'm going to get the point across without hurting my dog you know my dog needs to listen to me which means when she's around other people if I tell her not to jump that's my responsibility that's not the responsibility of someone else so discourage other people from doing this they could reward your dog for sitting they could help you in a positive right. way so but not in a negative we're way. we're so connected nowadays that if you have friends or family or someone yeah. coming over to the house have them send you a text do, 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 exactly before they get to, maybe when they pull in your driveway and then you can prepare for this training scenario and you know if you're out on can the street, I'm home don't let the puppy jump on me right <laughs> right exactly then if I'm not in a situation where I can train or, or be prepared to train then I know that the puppy can go in her crate while Kale comes in and all that excitement happens or if I do have an opportunity to train then I can put that leash on the puppy or I can take hold of their house line and we can work on it, yeah. it it's really really helpful this sort of goes, we're, we're doing our, our, we have a teaching plan and it, it's a little bit out of order right now, but this is something. Is that why you were wanting me to do the other way? Well, first? it's just a little, I, it, so this is something that I wanted to talk about with you guys because one of the questions I see so often in the comments of our videos is, what do I say to people when we're out for a walk mm. and they just want to pet my dog? They're so excited because and they don't care that they're puppy, jumping and they don't yeah. care that they're jumping. What if we've we've encountered this and we often I tell our students. I get this all the time. I even get this at dog events with dog people. They're almost worse than other people. Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. And they come in with the hands up and the squeaky voice. And it's like the dog's like they have no hope at, at being calm. Also, if you have a dog that's a bit submissive, I had a, a border collie a long time ago that would submissively pee when people would talking to her in a high squeaky voice and I would have to say to them no squeaking don't even make eye contact with her or she's gonna pee everywhere because they would look at her and go oh my god she's so cute and she'd melt and she'd pee everywhere oh it was uh, so frustrating yeah. um so how people respond and interact with your dog is really really important and what I usually do when when I have a puppy or a dog that I'm training in this is I will I say to them, you know, I'm really working on teaching her not to jump. Can you help me for a second? I would love for you to pet her, but just can I'm going to work a sit and then you can pet her or you can feed her when she's sitting. And if you sort of take control of the situation and say, you know, I don't want my dog to jump and I'm sort of doing this training thing. Will you help me? Most people are, are usually pretty good about it. Um, and it is very important that you're not letting people pet your dog if they're jumping because, again, that just erases all of the hard work you've been doing. Have them just stand for a moment and be still and sort of boring until your dog is sitting and under control on a loose leash. Then say, okay, now you can pet my dog. And if during the petting the dog starts to lose their mind and goes bananas again, uh, just ask that person to back away so you can regain control. Once, you know, the storm has settled, then you can let the person step in and pet the dog again. And it doesn't take long for the dog to figure out that pets don't come when you're being crazy. Yeah. People only say hi to you when you're being calm and, and um, controlled in the sit. I want to say goodnight to Morahan from Norway. I know that you stayed up really, really late to watch oh, us. And, thank uh, you. going to bed now. So thanks for joining us here on the train station. Um, Journey to Grace, uh, at what age should we worry about a puppy jumping and biting? Our puppy is seven months and is still nipping and jumping even after training. Yep. Well, it, this is not terribly uncommon. What yeah, you need it's to, not too late, but you, no. you need to get on it. You need to reevaluate yep. what you're doing, You mm -hmm. know the steps that you're taking to uh, affect change, because that's really what we want to do. The other thing you need to be really aware of, and this is something we preach to our uh, 
our Hi. train station viewers to our students be a great leader we have a video actually maybe dan the man the moderator man can drop that in the chat how to be a great leader for your dog there's some really good non-confrontational ways you can be a good leader for your dog and some simple things that you can integrate into your daily life uh, that will help your dog to under to see you as someone worth listening to and if dan can't get that then just search mccann dogs leadership uh or leadership training yeah we we personally deal with nipping with our dogs when they're like 10 weeks old so usually by the time they're 16 weeks old so four months old the nipping is subsided and and that's over and done with the jumping i would say we take a little bit longer because we don't want to be using a lot of like you know a lot of leash stuff with them when they're just babies like that um so if we have a, a really young dog we would try to do as many many uh preventative um, exercises as possible, like working on the sit, working on the off, um, all those types of things. But you can start that really, really, really early. It's not hurting them. So Mama Lioness is back. I know she's a, a, often in the train station. She says, jumping is my only issue. He's so big and cr uh, crazy happy when people come to my house. And hopefully you saw uh, the train station just maybe 10 minutes ago when we were talking about that. If not, just zoom back, uh, scrub back, and then you can see. We, we talked a little bit about how you can set yourself up to be uh, successful in that situation. Dan the man, the moderator man what a moderator he is be you know, a good leader you know what other exercise that we establish leadership it's all here yeah you know what other exercise we often use um she just reminded me by saying going to the door yep. is we have um at our house we have um like a crate and a dog bed sort of near the area of our door and we also sort of have like a threshold that you have to sort of step into our sunroom where the door is and the importance of this is that you can also boundary train your dog so for example right. if somebody comes to the door and you know the very first thing that i would do is i wouldn't go to the door let's show that what? this is a perfect train station moment let's oh. show a really quick boundary oh. train let's okay let's do you that you know why guys because i needed to toot and uh we need to send it on over to the train station do you want me to show it with a bed or with a crate or what do you want to yeah show? we can show uh, either one we can oh, show, I show both, I yeah do some boundary training. I think this will be helpful for you guys, and that's why I thought we would head over to the train station. Also, gave me a chance to toot. <laughs> You'll also get a chance to check out our acting skills. Acting. Okay, can you see my bed? Yep. Uh, maybe push back just a bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, Missy, nice. you got to get off the bed so I can move it. Okay. Well, she's beat me to the punch here. I'm going to put her collar and leash on again so I have good control. Okay, babes. So one of the first things that we would do is work on teaching our dogs to go to a place. So I have some food in my hand here and I'm just going to tell her on your bed. Yes, good girl. And I'm going to reward her once her feet are on the bed. Okay, babe. Ready? On your bed. Yes, good girl. So I'm basically building a lot of value. Yes, good girl for getting on the bed. Now, the other thing that you can do, okay, B is you can teach them how to remain on the bed. And I prefer to do, <laughs> yes, I prefer to do this uh, in a down position. So I would tell her on your bed, down. Yes, good girl. And I want her to lie down and then I'm gonna tell her wait. And I'm gonna make sure she holds place on the weight, on the bed. Yes, good wait, good girl. And I want her to remain there until I say, okay. And then let her get off. And I would work this, good girl. Okay, come here, on your bed, lie down. Yes, good girl. I would work this many, many, many times until I'm ready to work this with my uh, somebody coming to the door. And I might even do something in between. Wait. So I'm going to have her wait. And I'm going to take this B, which I know she really likes. Whoa, it's this. Oops, on your bed. Lie down. Good girl. On your bed. Good. On your bed. Yes. So I can actually start to proof it by having a distraction out in front. On your bed. Good girl. Okay. Yay. Good girl. Now, did you guys see how clear Kale was? The moment yes. Beeline made the choice to get up, she marked that. She marked that with her voice. That's really helpful. So, and it, I did it really quickly. Okay, out. On your bed. Good girl. Lie down. Good. Wait. So, I would work through that. Okay. I need you to come to my door. Oh, did you see that? I said, okay. My dog almost moved. Wait. Good girl. Okay, B. Okay, is this the acting part? This is the about? acting part. So if you can imagine, B and I are just hanging around in the house, and, and when I would just have her drag her leash like this. Here, B, come on over here. Good girl. And if somebody came to the door, are you on camera yet? Yes, you are. Okay, so if he came to the door, I would say to her, B, on your bed. 
lie down, good girl, wait. I would have her wait and then I could go to the door from there. And what we would suggest that you do when you're practicing this is practice, you know, send your husband outside so that you can practice. Don't wait till it's somebody yeah. that you don't know this is that really good. You know, it's going to catch you off guard. Don't yeah. wait till the pizza guy shows up and it's all of a sudden mayhem in your house. Also pizza. Yeah, also pizza is pretty exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> we literally had pizza for dinner. Right. So. so Ken would come in and I could take an opportunity to be in training mode. So I could say, yes, good on your bed, girly. And I could go back and reward her as somebody comes to the door. That's an excellent on your bed. Good girl. And then if I want to let her go say hello to whoever's at the door, I could do that. If I had a dog that was prone to jumping, though, I would just go to the exercise. So I would have my leash in my hand and I would tell her, okay, go say hi. Good girl, sit. Yay. I would ask her to sit to prevent her from jumping up. Good girl. I could reward her for that. Pet, Ken could pet her. Good, Good girl. girl. If she was to jump up at this time, I could tell her off and I could use that leash correction. It's okay, babe. Good girl. Off. Good girl. girl. Off. Off. Yes. A good, dog. good off. Okay, you ready? On your bed. I know. Good girl. Wait there. And I could send her back to the bed and then we could have our conversation or do it wherever we're doing. But it's really good to give the dog a job to do. But in order to make sure that the job is worth doing, you need to practice this behavior lots of times until the dog says, like, if I just, okay, if I even just walk near this bed, watch what happens. Like, she just literally, okay, good girl. If I walk near it, she just... She wants to get on it so badly because I've made it such a special place by having all kinds of praise and reward and all kinds of good things. So when somebody comes to the door, she likes people, but she also really likes to go to her bed because I've made this a very valuable place. And I would do the exact same exercise with her crate. I would have her go in and reward her and make that a big deal so that if somebody came to the door, I could say, in your crate, and she could just go in. We actually trained them to go in. And so if I said, in your crate, go kids. Good girl. Wait. Good girl. Wait. Good. I can train her to go in her crate and wait there until I release her. The same thing that I could do on the bed, I could do with the crate. Okay. Yay! You're a superstar. So while you guys yes. Are out, why don't Good we just girl. go right to the countertop? Feel like just sure. counter surfing really quickly. Do you want me to set that up, or do you think you can talk about it first? Uh, yeah, I can talk about it first. Um, so uh, can you see this? Oh yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Lots of work. Okay, lie down for a sec. So if your dog is doing a little bit of counter surfing, the same exercises that you do with the people, you could also do with the dog. So wait there for a second. So we have a little bit of cheese here that we're gonna use as a bit of a distraction. Look at this, okay, look at this. Oh, little bee, I got some cheesy cheese for you. So what I'm gonna do, oh, I think she likes it. So I'm going to take the cheese and I'm going to put it up on our little fake counter here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just sort of letting her go around the um, around the thing. Now, she's not going to jump on it though. Is that okay? Yeah, no, I think you can just... You, well, I'll, I mean, I'll show you what it is. the technique. I think I, what I think is really helpful for you guys at home is how to set your dog up. Um, Jumping on the counter surfing is such a transient behavior. Some, it's hard to catch. It's hard to know when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But at home, you can set your dog up to make that choice. And you can really work through this exercise. And that's sort of, yeah. I think, would be good to talk and about. And if I was practicing this, I would try, I, I would, wouldn't just let her fail. I would set her up to be successful. So, okay, I would maybe take my distraction. I'm going to put it up here. Good girl. What's that? Good. Yes. I'll put it back so that she might jump. Now I'm going to tell her, okay, off. Yes, good girl. So she just placed herself into a sit. I, I don't care whether she sat or not. As long as her paws are on the floor, I'm happy. If she was to be in a standing position, I would be equally as happy. Good, off, good, okay. Good girl. Good girl, off. Yes, B. Good girl. Okay, check it out. Off. Yes. Good girl. So I could use my off command and I could compliment that by rewarding her. Good girl. Now, she's being very smart right now not to jump up. But if she did go to jump up on the thing, okay, put your paws up, 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 up. Yes, good girl. So if her paws got up and I was a bit late at indicating that, that she shouldn't jump, uh oh, my props are going all over the place. Hop up, good girl, wait. And she was jumping up on the thing, hop up, good girl, yes. I could tell her off and I would pull towards the floor with the leash and then I could proceed again.
good girl be? That wasn't very fair, was yeah, it? Yeah, no, good but girl. I think this is a, a really important um, moment to talk about. You're not mad. Your dog just doesn't understand. You need to give them clear yeah. information. The other thing that's really important, too, is, again, the prevention. I'm not going to wait until my dog's up on the counter before I'm addressing things. I said at the very beginning of the live stream, if you're still having a problem with jumping, it's probably because your dog's jumping up on something and then you're trying to get them off. That's why we don't use phrases like get down or things like that. Off means as I approach, okay, whatever she wants to go and see, I'm going to tell her off before she decides to jump up. And now she has two choices to make. She can either stay off, in which I'm going to reward her and make it worth her while, or she's going to say, I don't really know this word off or care about this word off, and boom, she's going to jump. And then I'm right here to be ready with good timing to get her off of the counter and then get after her for that and then simply try again. But my goal is to make staying off as appealing as jumping up and stealing things. It's the same thing as I want to make getting on the bed appealing to the dog so that she wants to do that. I want her, you can see B as I come close. Okay, okay. See how she automatically sits? Because she has been rewarded for sitting in front of a distraction thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And she has probably jumped up to get something three times in her life. So you can see where the balance is. She's learned successful behaviors with positive reinforcement and not been able to rehearse bad behaviors by jumping up and self-rewarding by grabbing things. Yeah. Hey, girl. And then the last thing you can do, ready, B? Hop. Oh, no. Look at me. Hop. No, no, hop. 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 Yay. Oh, that was an epic <laughs> fail. No, yeah. Hop. She's... She, no, no. She wants to... She's not sure she should jump on that. Leave it. Okay. Hop. No, no. Hop. Hop. Yay. <laughs> Good girl. You can teach them to jump up on purpose if you want. Yeah, that's good also girl. a good way to understand the timing. Yeah. Okay. Good girl. Uh, dropping some knowledge. I'm dropping Poor some tools here in the train station. Because I said jump up with her paws I know, on the thing. You worked she a wasn't a couple really sure. Hi, buddy. I confused you. I'm sorry, Freckles. Okay, so some really good questions here in the chat. Now's your <laughs> chance to ask. Your <laughs> now's your chance <laughs> to ask us your jumping questions. Um, Judy... Hillers, uh, -E. you're going to help me impress my trainer next Monday. My lo my dog loves oh, other nice. people, and I'm trying to teach go see and then redirect to me. Yeah. This will help immensely. Yeah, we teach go see, go say hi, so that they kind of go to people on command, and then we practice calling their name so that they'll leave the person when we ask them as well. So um, Griselle Diaz says, my dog's big. She loses control the moment someone comes to visit. She wants to play but doesn't realize how big she is. I'm afraid she will hurt someone. Yeah, and that, this that's is possible. This is a really important realization that some people have. Maybe you aren't in a position right now where you can train through something like this. When so a stranger or a friend or family member, somebody comes into the house, Now's the best time to put your dog in a situation in a crate or a kennel or something where they can't make this mistake. It really allows you to set her up to be successful. You can have your leash on. You can start at the end of a hallway. You can start at a distance where she isn't going totally crazy. But I will tell you that trying to train her in a situation where your dog is already crazy, except you know, her, she's like level 11, you can't work at a level 11 for her. You need to you know, bring the levels down to like a level one or two so that you can uh, help her to be right and help to train through it. And make sure that there's a lot of value for sitting and sure. value for going on the bed or whatever, whatever you're gonna be using, the dog really needs to have rehearsed that many, many times with rewards before you're actually implementing it in the actual situation. Um, Dan had mentioned about the leave it command, and I did I did mention yeah. it really briefly earlier, Dan, but I'll say it again. Leave it is a really helpful thing, especially if your dog is, you know, if we're cooking something in the kitchen and you can see the dogs walk around and like air scent to be like, ooh, that smells good. We'll say, hey, leave it. As if to say, whatever you're thinking about right now, right. don't think about that. Yeah, so we um, talked at the so, top of the show yeah. about uh, understanding some of those uh, cues that your dog's giving you. One might be air scenting. One might be just standing stock still. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're sniffing the counter. Use your off. And now you have the tools to really help your dog through that situation. Use your off at that point. Melinda Miller, and this is a really common question. My dog only jumps on counters when we leave the room. Mm -hmm. Super common, Melinda. And this is one of the things. This is why you ha you must set your dog up using some of those tips that we talked about tonight. Uh, you need to set them up to make that choice. You need Dogs will do what's rewarding. I say it over and over again because it's so important that you understand that 
if you you saw Beeline defaulted to a sit, defaulted to go mm-hmm. to her beds, because we've shown her that's what's ultimately rewarding. So you need to work with your dog. Focus some time on training these skills. Have your house line on, your leash or your line on, and work specifically on stopping her from him or her from jumping up. And also too, like you know, set them up, go out of the room for a second on purpose, and yep. then just peer around the corners. So you can kind of see what's happening. And if she goes to jump on the counter or scold her, hey, ah, ah, you know, get after yeah, her. Tell right. her leave it. Come in. So she goes, holy, how did you? see me when you weren't even in the room yeah i've even gotten like a mirror like a compact mirror and put it around the corner like gone james bond on the dog before and like sounds very yeah, james it, bond. super sick james bond <laughs> and you know you can see what's going on and if i see the dog you know doing something supposed to hey hey leave that and the dog's sort of like whoa how are you even paying attention to me right now or get a long line and you know have it so long that it goes out of the kitchen and then into the other room you got to be smart, you know, smarter yeah. than the dog because they're pretty darn smart. Oh, yeah, they're very smart. Um, I need to mention, Shandy Blake says, just wanted to wish you good luck this oh, weekend. Oh, thank you, Shandy. Very I'm very nice. sad that you're not coming to the competition this weekend. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Beatriz says, my dog is strong and big, golden retriever puppy, and he loves to jump. In this case, what should I do if I cannot pr- can correct him properly because he is stronger than me? Change your equipment that you're using when yeah. you're training. Yeah. Um, if he's really that strong, we would highly recommend you using a gentle leader. Um, it's a wonderful head halter that is powerful yet gentle on the dog's um, head, which is why it's called a gentle leader. It leads them gently. Right. And um, what's great about that is you can redirect the dog by turning their head because the leash is attached underneath the dog's chin yeah. and um, it has a nice calming effect on a dog Which so is super helpful yeah it, it will give you a lot more control we love the gentle leader and we do suggest um gentle leader versus the other head halters than and head gears that are out there um in the future so in the future in the world yeah so um yeah a gentle leader is what we would suggest it's it's a wonderful tool extremely helpful for small people with big heavy dogs and strong dogs yeah yeah gentle leader specifically we have actually have some with metal uh, hardware and i suggest those i know some people get the plastic hardware one we're actually mm. going to make those available really soon for you guys if you need something like <laughs> dan kale that. that's a prison trick <laughs> ken did you know this about kale <laughs> what I my did. mirror my mirror oh thing. yes yeah must, i would do well really well in prison about. no it's terrible kale um, 007 you guys are funny uh let's see i didn't he, really realize it was that weird guys no it's a good <laughs> idea it makes sense to me it allows you to have great timing when you your dog doesn't think you're watching them yeah um uh asking uh the question of the day was um what causes your dog to jump up mm. uh and kiwi cali says yes uh, she does but since i've been watching you she's getting better at uh, not jumping good oh, that's really nice i actually didn't know that was a compliment when i thought it was a question oh. so <laughs> Um, there's a couple questions here that aren't specifically about jumping, but if you have questions about jumping, drop them in the chat. If you're just getting here, uh, we've, for the last hour, you've, uh, been watching the train station or we've been talking here in the train station. So you can scrub back. We've talked about jumping up on people, jumping up on counters. Um, we need to talk about jumping up on the couch. I think that's going to be an important thing. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yep. You need to go over here to get that one. Okay, so, uh, hi, sweetie pie. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, but sometimes I don't have treats with me. How do I reward her if she does something good? You can use praise and you really can good use question. petting. Yeah, you don't have to use food. Food is great because, you know, it's a very high re- high value reinforcement for a dog. Reinforcer for a dog, you could use toys sometimes. Yeah. Or sometimes you can simply just praise them and talk to them in a soft voice, in a calming voice, um, and then pat them and and praise them from there. Um, The tone of voice that you use when your dog training is very, very important. Um, I've seen a lot of people make a perfect situation go poorly because of the type of praise that they use. So they have an excitable dog that's finally calmed down. It's sitting on a loose leash and the person's so excited that the dog's doing such a great job that they go, good girl, good boy. Yeah. And they like, and then the dog woo goes crazy right. again. So it it harder if you're trying to reward the dog for a calm behavior, or you're trying to achieve calm behavior, your praise should be calm. Your voice should be calm. Your touch should be calm because it will help keep the dog in a, in a softer state. Uh, Jessica Medina, my dog jumps and nips at the kids. The minute we come home, how do I get him to be gentle with the kids? I have a 10 month old French bulldog. 
The first thing I'm going to suggest, Jessica, is better management. So have your dog in a crate. Have your dog in a situation where they he can't come blasting out and jump up on the kids. It's really important that you don't allow him to rehearse that because it's probably really fun, very self-rewarding. Um, and then you can work on some of the things we've talked about tonight. If um, if you just got here, maybe you can scrub back in the uh, the live stream and check out. We talked about uh, teaching your dog not to jump on people. We talked a lot about or talked a little bit about teaching your like, training with kids. So um, mm -hmm. better management is going to be a good start for you um, in a pro how you're going to approach this. And you, uh, we said this before, but it's definitely worth saying again. It's really important that if you're trying to fix a jumping up issue, whether it's on per people, counters, couches, whatever it is, you need to make sure that you're redirecting your dog and giving them different inf information before they've jumped. Right. So in this case, if you open the door and your little Frenchie, adorable little Frenchie gets to jump all over the kids and you for a couple minutes, and then you're trying to do something about it, you're not going to fix your problem. You need to make sure that someone's there with the dog so that when somebody comes in, somebody can have the leash in their hand, they can be getting the dog to be sitting and being calm. You can't let the dogs rehearse jumping. Once they commit the crime, you're donezo. So you have to... You got to do the time. Yeah. Isn't that how the thing goes? Bringing it back to oh, prison yeah. reference again. Yeah. <laughs> Kale, Kale's in badass over here. Yeah, I know. You've been in prison so many times. She's just got the lingo down. This is where the train whistle came uh, from. This was made of a bar of soap. I hope everyone. nobody's coming in this at was this point. A bar of soap <laughs> works great as a train whistle, though. Uh, Tons of good questions. We're in overtime. We actually have to. We have to go. We have to go get some stuff ready. I want to thank you guys for joining us. I hope you found some value uh, here. We do our live streams every Thursday night. Uh, we do three a month, and then we do a Tuesday night live stream. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining us. There are tons of great questions. I love the opportunity to chat with you and uh, you know answer the questions that you might have. This is a great opportunity. Hi, sweetie. Bye. Um, this is a great opportunity for me to see where you guys are at in your training, and I appreciate everyone letting us know where they are. But um, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every week to help you to have a well-behaved, four-legged family member. As always, we have to thank Dan, the moderator man. He, his thumbs must be tired or his yes. typing fingers must be tired. Ton dropping tons of links in the chat. That's not an easy, I've seen him. It's like, it's like watching a, the space shuttle control center. Yes. Uh, when he's, he's got it all set up just so that you guys can get all the information um, that you can. So we have to thank Dan for that. Remember, if you want to grab a team tea, go down in the link in the description below. If you want to ask a question, if you want to call us with a question, check out the anchor link in the description <laughs> gotcha. below. Thank you guys for joining us. I had a blast. It's time to go. Uh, the, the train has ended. Uh, thank the train you guys. Is leaving the station. It's, it's left the station now. I want to thank you guys for joining us. And on that note, I'm Ken. I'm Kale. This is Beeline. Happy training, guys. See you next week.